Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanali Zedan. I remain your host, Shed, if you're a 333, and this next match is going to be between Capricious and Failthos on Ravaged. Which should be familiar. I cast it all the time because this is a great map. Like the cliffs, like the fact that you have a lot of different options that work for factories. And we're going to see Light Vehicles versus Shields. Light Vehicles from Capricious and Shields from Failthos. Failthos going immediately for the dirtbag. Pretty common thing. It'll probably go around the south side of the base and then jump in. Because that's usually what happens. And yes, that is exactly what's going on. While Capricious going for a dart for quick scouting, because that's what you do. Light Vehicles typically do that. Last game we did see four Scorchers right off the bat, but that was because it was a Scorcher Dive Rush. Normally that's not how people go. Normally this is how people start Light Vehicles. Something like this. Or like Dart Mason Dart or Dart Mason Scorcher or Dart Scorcher Mason. Depends on the map, depends on the player, but it's usually some combination of those. And this is pretty normal. And Fieldhouse going for a quick bandit for defense. Ravage being what it is, it is relatively easy to defend the main base. We have seen some matches where it's gotten undefended. And it's pretty clear why that's a bad thing. Although the Dark could theoretically... I don't know. The dark, <laughs> there was a small timing window the Dark could have gone into the base, but there was no way Capricious could have known that. And the dirt bag being spotted out, but unfortunately it will be able to scout out the base. We'll be able to see what's going on. I mean, there's not a whole lot of information that's there. Like, Capricious has taken everything. They put a few wind generators. The one thing that is clear is that there aren't solar collectors or anything on this side. But Failthos isn't going for jump bots, so that's not really a concern. It's like If you're playing against jump bots, you want to put solar collectors on the side of your base near that cliff. On the other side from your ramp. And then put lotuses behind that. Because then Pyros try to jump in, and they can't easily deal with the Lotus, and they also can't easily get rid of... They can kind of get rid of the Metal Extractors, but if the Solar Collectors are far enough away, they can't easily push through, like, fire through the Solar Collectors to the Metal Extractors. And it just reduces the amount of damage that would be dealt from a jump raid. However, for Shield Bots, the only jumping enemy is... Or jumping unit, I should say. What game am I thinking of? The only jumping unit is the Dirt Bag, and the Dirt Bag doesn't deal a whole lot of damage. So it's not really a concern. And Fieldhouse doing a pretty good job, just setting up, defending. Capricious also setting up, but much more naked. They have no defenses at their, well, their expansion here. The natural expansion is undefended. Their main base is relatively well defended. While Fieldhouse's main base is pretty much entirely defended by bandits. They are relying on the fact that, I mean, Capricious, Capricious is going for light vehicles. There's no reason to worry about the main base other than the ramp. And honestly, Fieldhouse could set up a wall. Like, they, could, they could terraform a wall. And that would completely eliminate Capricious' ability to move around the base. Like, especially if they terraform a bot pathable ramp up and then a bot pathable ramp down. Filthos would have no problem getting around that and Capricious would be stuck. It's actually kind of surprising Capricious is going for light vehicles when that's a possibility. I've had that happen to me. It was a while ago, but I've had it happen to me and I'm never going to forget that. Because that was devastating. Like, that was a clear example of why light vehicles are tricky to play on this map. They're not impossible by any stretch, but... There's a lot of things you can do to really ruin a light vehicle player's day that you can't easily do to other factories. Anyway, speaking of ruining days, Filthus with some nice harassment. I mean, getting rid of the worker, that's huge. But then also on top of that, getting rid of three metal extractors. Knocking Capricious more or less down to normal. Capricious was actually a bit ahead, and Capricious has been building a caretaker. They do have a fair amount of production in their factory, so that was not wasted metal at least. Capricious did make that work out. They were using it, which is good. And getting rid of the bandits, I mean, Capricious is probably going to want to go for some counter raiding. Although on the other hand, Capricious is so far ahead economically. I mean, the fact that they're expanding naked is risky, and we've just seen that risk does have its costs. But even then, Capricious is still ahead economically compared to Failthos. Failthos, they're kind of building up, but they want to defend. Like, Failthos wants to make sure that everything they build is safe. Capricious just doesn't care. They figure, well, if something dies, I'll just rebuild it. I mean, here we do see some defenses over by the center expansion, but that's because that is a very contested expansion. As far as raids in the back of the base go, not something Capricious is going to worry about too much, and it is going to help. The question, of course, is will it ultimately pay off? But at this point, it's kind of hard to say. Like I said, at this point, Capricious has actually been slightly punished for it, but that wasn't a huge punishment. Unfortunately, Capricious is starting... Oh, they're not producing. What the heck? Capricious, build something! Your factory's going unused. I hate when that happens. Like, I don't know. I find it mildly annoying when players... I hate when that happens to me when I forget, oh crap, why did I not build something? 
But I find it mildly annoying when it happens in general because it's such a silly reason to have excess metal is that you forgot to put your stuff on infinite loop. Or you didn't put it on infinite loop and you forgot, oh, my production's done. I should build more stuff or I should queue up more stuff. And I think, yeah, Capricious is not going for an infinite queue. Fealthos is, Capricious is not. So it's really a matter of Capricious needs to be very mindful of when their factory's done. Because that's going to make or break their game. Like, if they don't remember to build their factory up, or to keep their factory producing stuff, they're going to end up excessing and losing, and their economic advantage is not going to do them any good, even as it is now. They need another caretaker here in order to do much good, or this makes, like, something, build something here. Or maybe another factory, I don't know, but build something. Because right now, all of Capricious' economy is going into the defenses on the front line right here, and that's about it. There's this one mason that could be building up more metal extractors, but otherwise not much. There's not a whole lot of military production, which there could be. And the Ravager's doing a fine job, but Capricious is going to have to be really careful with this. Despite their economic advantage, they are not producing as much. Philthos has 30 metal per second going into their factory. Capricious only has 20... Oh, I finally have another Caretaker. Okay, there we go. Finally getting 30. And potentially 40 as well, so they are going to be able to make that metal pay off. But still, that was something that... That was getting close. That was getting very close to excess. The Capricious should be able to make up for it. They haven't lost a single Ravager yet in this fight. So at least they're still being relatively efficient. The problem, of course, being that the Thugs are also being efficient due to their shields. Finally, the shields ran out. The Thugs are close enough that it might not even matter. Nah, it doesn't really matter. The Thugs are able to get away. No real harm to them. The shields will regenerate no problem and everything will be fine. Ravagers, however, do not regenerate, and they need to get healed up or need to get repaired by something, like, say, this mason over here. But that mason is busy building metal extractors, which it should be. Anyway, Fieldhus... Contesting... Okay, so the center is getting pretty heavily contested. Like, Fieldhus really trying to hold that center expansion. Taking the northwest as well. And retaking the southeast. Re retaking the southeast. That was a second raid on the southeast exp No, wait. That was the first raid in the southeast expansion. Just retaking it. So yeah, Filthus having a bit of a hard time maintaining territory. It's just... Capricious is kind of everywhere. They have slashes over in the center of the base, just... Just slowly but surely tearing apart everything Filthus has built up in the center. And the Ravagers over in the southeast just waiting for this to be rebuilt and to tear it apart again, or... Making sure that nothing gets out of here. While at the same time, Capricious able to take pretty much their entire half of the map... On top of the reclaim they're getting, on top of the extra the extra overdrive they're getting for having more energy. Like fails us heavy on the wind, which is working out fairly well. Capricious also fairly heavy in the wind, but with a much better connected grid than fails us. Actually, yeah, that is heavy in the wind. That's all wind. Which on this map is fine. I mean it's 0.62.5. I Yeah, go for wind on this map. It's a great great power generation source. The only problem is that you need to have a well-connected grid in order to have the overdrive that Capricious is having, which is pretty much making the difference, actually. Very nearly. The two are pretty... E are they're almost even when it comes to metal extractors. There's like one or two metal extractors difference between the two players. Field thoughts, however, not producing at all. The shield bot factory is idle. Capricious has switched over to... or added air, rather. They've at just built an air factory as well. And given what they're fighting, we'll probably see a Thunderbird. There's really no reason to go for anything else. Against Shieldbot Factory, you go over Thunderbird, you stun them out, you take out all their shields, and then you just wreck face with the rest of your ground units. That's how you do it. Or maybe with the Phoenix, but usually with ground units. And that Thunderbird not being built yet. In fact, nothing being built. In fact, Capricious allowing themselves to excess metal again. There we go. Wyvern into... What? Wait, what? Okay. I guess they're expecting to tear apart the shields that way. Like, just by hitting it with a giant splash damage hit of, like, 2,000 damage or so. Actually, exactly 2,000 damage, because that's how much the Wyvern deals. Which wouldn't be the way I'd go, personally. I mean, it can work. I mean, the thug's being clumped up close enough, that's... Hmm. That wouldn't kill them. Not at full shields. I mean, right now they're inside of combat, and being in combat, yeah, these thugs would die as soon as the Wyvern's done, because their shields aren't fully charged. But fully charged shield thugs... Wouldn't be able to deal with this. And right now, Capricious, their commander, under heavy... Well, about to be under heavy fire. Thugs and Outlaws about to come in. 
Getting a little bit scared, though. The lightning gun scaring them off a little bit. Actually, quite a bit. But not enough. Capricious is going to be pulling away, and the... Ah, the forces are getting too far apart from each other for that to matter. Capricious, their commander is pretty much dead. The Wolverine's done. The Wolverine's coming in to try to save the day. But Capricious' commander is doomed. It's done. Bit of a revenge shot there, but only killing four thugs. I think that's worth cost? No, it's not worth cost. No, it's not with a commander loss. No, not even close. That was four thugs. That was less than a thousand metal for a two thousand metal unit. I mean, the Wolverine still has plenty of chances to make cost, but... What it would have wanted to do is destroy that entire thug ball. And instead, it just destroyed four of them, not the whole ball. So, the entire Thug Ball needs to die, and it's not going to die anytime soon. I really don't know why Capricious invested so much into a Wyvern. I can kind of see why, because like I said, if the units are clumped up fully and the shields aren't fully charged, then that would kill the ball. That's true. But Thunderbirds also set up the ball to be killed, so I don't know. And they don't require the units are clumped up. They just have to be relatively close to each other. Like, within shield link range. So pretty much any time. And we should see Wolverine coming down here, most likely. Is it going to come out? No, Capricious is not focusing on it. And that shield ball there is doing a whole lot of damage. That's not... Those re those Ravagers are going to be dead. They need to go to the ramp. They're not going to... Okay, they're, they're in this to die. Like, this is a fight to the death of the Ravagers. They have no escape route. That's it. They're done. No escape route at all. I'm going to try to deal a bit more damage, but that's about it. And the Wyvern... No, that's the Vulture! That's not the Wyvern! Why is there no Wyvern here? This Wyvern needs to do its thing. I do not understand what the Wyvern is up to. But that is Capricious' trump card at this point. Their ground forces have just about been completely wiped out. Their air force is a Wyvern. And it's able to deal a lot of damage, and it's about to deal quite a bit, actually. If it targets the right point. And as we can see, Faelthos being very careful to make sure that nothing gets too close to each other. Like, spreading units out right as the Wolverine came. The Wolverine had one shot, and it lost it. It's going to be able to kill about two of the thugs, maybe, if it actually decides to attack. Which, for some reason, it's not. I don't know what it's doing. That's Wolverine, not a Vulture. It needs to actually be dealing damage. The Vulture's over here. That's the Vulture. That's the one for scouting. The Wolverine's the one for killing. And there's no Thunderbirds for whatever reason. And we have Tridents up for Faelthos, because Faelthos knows, hey, I should build anti-air because Faelthos should build anti-air. Unfortunately for Faelthos, they're not in the best position right now. I mean, they're in a bit of a better position militarily, and economically, the two players are about even. Faelthos' rating pretty much made up for Capricious's rating, so the two are neck and neck. Capricious does have a better energy economy and a better connected grid, but right now they don't have a whole lot of metal extractors connected to that grid, so the overdrive isn't going to be helping them too much. I mean, once Fieldhouse retakes this lower section, they should be able to start getting back in here somewhat. Especially with the gunships being built up and no anti-air coming in from Capricious. None at all. In fact, nothing coming in from Capricious. Why is Capricious not building anything? I don't know. But nothing being built by Capricious, Fieldhouse should probably go for some gunships themselves because there's no anti-air being built up. There's no crashers. There's, there's some defenders maybe, but there's not much else. There's the Wolfern, which I suppose is a bit of a threat. But, you know, build some units that strafe around a bit, like Banshees, and then you'll be fine. And Feldhaus continuing to push in, not dealing enough damage to really get through. The this fight will not go in Feldhaus' favor. It's going to deal some damage, which is good. I mean, gets rid of the center, breaks that up a bit. We'll get rid of a few Ravagers here or there, but it's inside of Capricious' territory, so that reclaim is going to Capricious. And there's a bunch of Masons here. There's a Caretaker, there's two Masons. All the reclaim is going to Capricious. All of it. Feldhaus getting some reclaim of their own, but not much... And that's... yeah, that's about it. I mean... Fieldhouse just reclaiming everything from that fight in the lower section. They have rebuilt the area. But they're gonna want to build up over here in the northwest and obviously take back the center too. Which Capricious has put a lot of money into building up and keeping built up. And that Wyvern actually being slightly problematic on top of the Tridents. Not quite getting rid of it, but still. That got rid of more defenders than the Thugs and Outlaws did. Like that Wyvern actually worked against Capricious there. Still, right now, Filthos is trying to push back with... I don't know if it's the best choice of units. I really think that a few Rapiers or maybe even Brawlers or something. Like, yeah, the Wyvern is scary. But he builds some units that have more HP than that and start ripping everything apart. Capricious has no anti-air. They're not really working from an air-anti-air perspective. They just have the Wyvern. That's it. 
It's anti-gunship, but still. But yeah, Failed Us, I think... I think they don't really have much of a chance. They aren't pushing with as much variety. They're kind of being predictable, and Capricious just needs to push, keep pushing. Like, at this point, what Capricious has is working. It's working slowly, but it's working. And Capricious is rebuilding after all that, and Feltos throws in the towel. <sighs> Feel kind of bad. I guess Feltos just got kind of tired. Like, couldn't really think anymore, because they had more... Well, not necessarily more metal, but their income was pretty much neck and neck. They had quite a lot of metal in storage. They had a gunship plant against a player with no anti-air. So I'm not sure what Feltos was thinking. I'm really... Whoa, what the heck? Yeah, I'm quite curious what Feltos was thinking, because that didn't seem like it was Feltos' lost game. I mean, it was definitely, it would definitely be an uphill struggle. No doubt about it. It'd be hard to get back from there. But, I don't know, I feel like Filthus could have. But at that point, was just getting so worn down that they psychologically couldn't. That's the impression I got from that. Still interesting game. I mean, Light Vehicles definitely worked pretty well. The Naked Expansion ended up paying off, even if it didn't at first, or didn't seem to at first. Capricious just kept expanding and re-expanding, and Philthos never really rebuilt the center. Did rebuild the lower section, but never really went for this side either. Yeah, I mean, I guess there was a lot of defenses. It is kind of intimidating. I guess the, th the fear would have been, oh, if I go for air, then my opponent will end up going for anti-air. But, I mean, at that point, Philthos is... I mean, at that point... Later on, no, but at that particular moment, Feldhouse's ground forces, when they had all the thugs and outlaws, that was quite a lot. Quite a lot. And if th there was a lot of anti air being built, that would have reduced Capricious's ground forces. And Feldhouse's ground forces were okay at the time. And that would have. That could have easily tipped it in Feldhouse's favor. Depends on usage, depends on positioning. But it would have come down to positioning, not just to raw numbers and unit types. But we didn't see that game, so. That was the game we saw. It was a pretty good game. Next game, last game for today, is going to be between Filthas and Clone on Bandit Plains. So, a lot of Filthas and a lot of Clone. I didn't even notice that. Hmm. Anyway, that'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.